Hello everyone and welcome to a most interesting game from round 7 of this year's London Chess Classic. It just finished and uh, it's uh, quite a, quite an amazing game. If, if you run it through an engine it will say that it is perhaps not the most precise game by either player but it is definitely a most interesting one. If there was a an engine that um, evaluated chess moves by how interesting they are, this game would score I believe uh, close to 100%. Now let's check it out. Hans Niemann versus the Polish Grandmaster uh, Mateusz Bartel. Uh, you guys will have a really awesome pause the video moment in this one. Let's check it out. So Neiman has the white pieces and he opens with e4. We have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. Hans goes for the Gioco Piano, the Italian game, knight to f6, and now d3. Uh, switching to the modern bishop's opening of the two knights defense with h6, uh, and now pawn to c3. We have d6, pawn to a4, and now pawn to g6. Uh, we have pawn to a5, grabbing more space on the queen side, and pawn to a6. We have castles and bishop to g7. Knight b to d2, and now we have castles here. Uh, rook to e1, and knight to h7, with the idea of moving the king and advancing that pawn to f5 at some point. Uh, also, you do get uh, more control over that uh, g5 square. So here we have queen to b3, putting pressure on this f7 pawn, so you can't play king to h8, as the f7 pawn would fall. Uh, but interestingly, this is uh, the amazing part that's exactly what happened Mateusz played king to h8 and he offers the f7 pawn now the question is should you capture this pawn uh, well, our good friend the engine says that yes, most definitely it is the best move. It's a free pawn, so we should capture it. And that is what Hans plays. He plays bishop, captures on f7. Queen to f6 now threatening the bishop and also gaining nice control over the f-file. And the bishop back to c4. We have pawn to g5. Now Mateusz wants to play g4, kick away the knight and capture on f2. And hopefully very quickly checkmate the white king. So you have to prevent this. Rook to e2. Now the knight can move. The f2 pawn is defended. And pawn to g4. We have knight back to e1 and now pawn to h5. So okay, you give up a pawn, but you are getting a huge initiative for it. We have knight to f1, the knight, uh, the knights are ready here to stop the advancement of the black pawns. Pawn to h4. We have queen back to d1. Uh, the queen also wants to help out with the defense. And now knight to e7. Preparing to bring this knight into the attack as well. Uh, we have queen to d2. Uh, or tr uh, trying to get the queen uh, or, or control over those dark squares. So now, for example, knight g5 is impossible as the queen and bishop control it. And here, pawn to c6. So grabbing more space um, uh, in the center. Also, you will have support for d5 in the future if needed. Uh, we have pawn to g3. And now pawn to d5 right away so just um, uh, like a game you would see maybe in uh, 1854 like it's that kind of a game so bishop back to b3 and now bishop to e6 okay just developing preparing to get the rook into the game the bishop will be very useful on this diagonal knight to g2 putting pressure on the pawn here and knight to g6 defending with e captures on d5 c captures and now hans has to decide how to go about it now, the uh, most objectively precise way to play is knight captures on h4. And it looks weird, you allow black to mess up your pawn structure, but after queen captures on h4 and queen to e1, there's really not all that much black can play. Uh, once the knight lands on g3, that's pretty much it. Black does not have a way of um, uh, forcing anything here, and black opened up his king considerably as well. However, Hans played pawn to d4 instead. We have pawn to e4, closing up the position, uh, making the bishop on b3 not so useful a piece uh, and now rook to a4 hans wants to get that c4 move uh, up the board we have pawn to h3 and knight back to e1 and hans is very happy with his position here because the pawns although uh, uh they are very far advanced aren't really doing any damage here it's merely a double shield towards the white king so you know if you if you're opening up this position you have to sacrifice something so queen back to f7 now rook to b4 putting pressure on the b7 pawn and now rook a to c8 we have bishop to c2, uh, uh, putting the bishop on this diagonal, and now bishop to f6, uh, gaining more control over uh, g5 and h4. Also, you will be able to harass the rook with, let's say, bishop to e7. Uh, queen to d1, and now we have bishop to d8, shifting the bishop over to this diagonal to be used to attack the, the, the white king, but also just putting pressure on that a5 pawn. So here we have bishop to h6, attacking the rook on f8, and rook to g8. We have bishop... Uh, um, 
uh, sorry, pawn to c4, uh, trying to open up the position, and uh, th there's really not all that much you can do. Like, bishop captures on a5 is nice, okay, but then you attack the bishop with rook to a4, the bishop will move, and then you capture on d5, uh, completely opening up the position. You will capture on e4, and you will get to the past d pawn, whereas black's attack simply is not happening. But instead, bishop to g5 was played, saying, uh, okay, let's just trade here. Hans said, all right, let's do it. Bishop captures, knight captures, and now knight to e3. Uh, putting just more pressure on d5, Hans knows that once this uh, happens, either c captures or captures here and then d5, that his position will be uh, just winning. And here we have knight to h4. Uh, this is, uh, Mateusz realizes that, uh, you know, a situation on the queen side and in the center is not going his way, so he has to look for his chances on the king side. Okay, Hans ex accepts the, the sacrifice, g captures on h4, knight to f3 with check, and now king to h1. This is the, the absolute best way to do it. Of course, capturing the knight uh, would not be all that impressive after g captures on f3 as it comes with a check from the rook, and once you move the king, then you lose the rook as well. And, uh, well, the, the entire position opens up for the black pieces to attack the white king. However, after king to h1, Hans's king is remarkably safe here. Knight captures on h2 was played, uh, and now c captures on d5, ignoring the knight here. And okay, g3, uh, we have d captures on e6, and now g2 with check. Like I said, li like it was played in 1854. Uh, we have knight 3 captures on g2, h captures on g2, and now not capturing the knight, of course, because then you just get checkmated. g1, queen, king h3, and queen captures on, h uh, on e6, for example, will be checkmate. So king to g1 was played, and now queen to f4, trying to get the knight uh, to g4, and then to checkmate the white king. And Hans says, all right, let's go rook captures on e4 attacking the queen but now you have to go for it queen captures on f2 you either sacrifice the queen here or you resign the game uh, but the queen sacrifice is, is uh, only a temporary one as you will be getting another one so king captures g1 uh, bringing a queen into the game with check king e2 and now knight to f1 uh, preparing something, although there isn't all that much you can do here. Hans is, uh, in fact, objectively completely winning here. But if that was the case, uh, this would not be as interesting a game. So queen to c1 was played. Hans wants to play queen to h6. Checkmate delivered mate in one. And now comes rook to g2 with check. Checking the white king and nicely connecting with the bishop on c2. And look at this. King to d1. Rook c captures on c2. And this is where the magic happens. What do you play here in this position? Uh, Hans's position is completely winning and uh, to, uh, to be frank with you there's more than one winning move here many moves are completely winning for Hans here so feel free to pause the video and win the game for Hans while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on going either for queen to h6 with check or e7, uh, as those are two two of the very winning ideas. And for those of you who played queen captures on c2, the move that Hans played, that move will not be winning you the game. So just to give an example, if you play queen to h6 check, king to g8, and now e7, there's not all that much black can do. You can give um, uh, maybe one check, but it's not all that impressive. Rook g to d2 check. Queen will have to capture, sure, but it's not a problem. Let's say rook captures on d2, king to c1, and uh, there, uh, th there's no continuation here. Uh, this pawn will just queen, and that's it. There, there's no way for you to even complicate things here. Whatever you play here, just pawn promotes to a queen, and that's it. It's unstoppable. And uh, th there aren't any useful checks. There's really nothing you can do here. So queen to h6 in that position uh, really... Uh, the, the way to go and even the reason Hans put the queen on this diagonal. Uh, the other move you could play is e7 right away. You could even sacrifice the queen on c1 and, and after rook captures you could play king captures. Again, not much for black to do. Black will have to stop the pawn with something like rook to g8. Then you will bring a queen into the game and after rook captures, rook captures with check king to g7. Uh, now rook captures on b7 with check and you have too much material uh, for, uh, for the queen. King to f6, you will play knight to f3, attack the queen and then slowly uh, improve your position and get those uh, pawns up the board uh, or even just win tactically.
So those were the two options available to Hans. This one a bit more uh, uh, calculating required, but Queen to H6 just wins on the spot. However, Hans played Queen captures on C2. I imagine under the impression that absolutely everything is winning here, but um, uh, even though it's similar to the position that we just discussed, this uh, this move also blunders a piece. So Rook captures on C2, Knight captures on C2, and now the move that Hans missed is Knight to E3, the double check. A very strange uh, to, to miss a move like that, and it was wasn't even in time trouble. Hans had like 20. Uh, let me just check. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, when Queen captures on C2 was played. Yeah, he had 31, uh, 32 minutes on the clock. So uh, not really an issue. But yeah, here you will lose material because now after King to D2, uh, Queen to F2 check, probably the move that he missed. King to D3 and now just Knight captures on C2. And you cannot take the Knight uh, and th there's uh, really not all that much uh, uh, you you can do. You, like if you if you play a Rook captures on B7, Queen F3 check and you can't, you can't do anything. If you take the Knight, uh, then queen captures rook with check also picks up the other rook you also cannot block with the rook because the square is covered so that's a huge problem for Hans so Hans said all right I'm not even gonna move the knight I'm not gonna uh, move the rook uh, I'm gonna advance the pawn to d5 and this is where things really have gone wrong with rook captures on b7 still possible uh, although like I said it's bad but it's still possible to continue with with queen to f3 check king to d2 and queen captures on e4 e7 and you, you're still fighting for the draw although not not the greatest of positions but after pawn to d5 uh, now he's already entering lo losing territory knight captures on b4 comes with check rook captures on b4 and now queen to c5 so okay he still has the rook and he still still has the two connected pass pawns he has the outside pass the h pawn uh, but uh, uh it's uh, simply not possible to win this if uh, uh mateusz plays it precisely so here let's see what happened rook to d4 of course hans wants to start the pushing that pawn so of course you blockade it queen to d6 with king to e4 king to g7 it's important to bring the king here to help out with the advance uh, with, with the stopping of the advancement of the white pawns so the black queen can become active start checking the white king and first pick off the weaknesses of the position uh, before uh, advancing these pawns because a queen alone will not be able to beat the rook and the two connected pass pawns so rook d3 uh, we have queen to h2 now just going after the weaknesses here rook to c3 uh, and now queen captures on h4 with check. There's no stopping that. King f5, queen to h5 with check, king to e4, and now queen to h4 with check. King f5, and now queen to h2. Of course, not agreeing to a repetition. King to e4, king to g6. Now we have rook to c8, and now queen to d6. Again, it's best to just stop those pawns right where they are. Uh, rook back to c2, and now queen back to g3. Rook back to c8, king to g7, and now king to d4. Uh, we have queen to f4 with check, king to d3, and now queen to d6 going after the pawn here. So king to c4, and now king to f6. We have rook to h8, uh, queen to c7 with check. We have king to d4, and now queen to g7. Attacking the rook, not allowing any checks from behind. Rook to h1, and now king to e7 with check, nicely blockading the position here. King to c5, uh, and now queen to g6 uh, was played here. Queen to g3 would be a pretty bad move, even though it looks like you're going after the white king from behind, uh, but rook to h7 would ensure Hans a draw. So it's best to uh, keep it clean. Queen to g6, now just going after a queen to c2 check, which will pick off the b2 pawn. And that's pretty much it. If you go for uh, b4, then queen to e4 will attack the rook and the b4 pawn and also guard h7. So uh, e even that is impossible for white, even though b4 is winning in, in most uh, positions for white. Uh, but yeah, here rook to c1, stopping queen to c2, check. Now queen to d3. Again, whatever you play, you're you're gonna connect with something here. Queen b5 check will just pick up the pawn. So rook to c4 was played, but now queen to e3 check. And now if you go king to b4, doesn't really help you. Queen to d2 check will connect with the b2 pawn and with the d5 pawn. So you will start losing material. So Hans tried rook to d4. Uh, and here queen to c1 check finally picks off the b2 pawn. And once the b pawn leaves the board, you know that it really is over. Rook to c4, queen captures on b2. Rook e4. Uh, hoping for something but uh, uh, it's not happening uh, you, you, you're now hoping to advance d6 as the e6 pawn is defended but queen b5 check king d4 queen captures on a5 stopping uh, all of Hans's hopes and the dreams 
uh, king to, uh, sorry, uh, king to e5, now comes queen to c7 with check, and he was in this position on move 74, or maybe even uh, in this position on move 75, that Hans Niemann resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. There is no move, and now black can simply start advancing the pawns, and it's game over. There, there is no way for you to ever push this pawn with the king and queen controlling the square, uh, so it's, uh, you know, resigns time. So it's a very, very strange situation where Hans was... Um, uh, better for pretty much uh, the entire game uh, and then once this rook captures and c2 move landed and Hans had uh, 33 minutes on the clock uh, uh, he had two winning ideas queen to h6 a winning idea e7 a winning idea uh, and also the move that he played queen captures and c2 the, the position is a draw but uh, I, I guess he was so uh, you know uh, furious with himself for for blundering such a winning position that he ended up losing it, which is something that uh, okay happens to everyone, and obviously it can also happen on the uh, on the uh, top level. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Big congratulations uh, to Mateusz for executing hunts like this with the black pieces. I mean, th this is truly a, 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 like an attacking game that uh, we'd see in a, in a book, you know, really like something Mor Morphy would play or Anderson would play or, you know, some of the older masters sacrifice the F pawn, push H5, G5, H4, you know, blockade the position on the king side and then sacrifice for the attack against the the white king then a, a, a temporary queen sacrifice then i mean uh crazy stuff yeah uh beautiful game it it seems that it was too much for hans to handle and the mateus uh, emerges victorious uh so yeah, once again hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to wish a very happy birthday to bushan barzgade and i would like to thank david gasparian rick schaefer albert villardel uh, and nathan i love you dad for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and remember whenever you have more than one winning option uh, make, make sure you still choose the, the winning one. Uh, see you soon.